Douglas? Doug? Dougie G. Hey, sorry, guys. Hey, talking to me. Buddy. Mm, I have that on. on. I got fat cheeks. They mute the phone quite often. Okay. How are my uh, two favorite morning talk show hosts today? Thank Very you, good. Very good. Not many morning talk shows to choose from but here, but we'll, we'll take it in. Anyway. How's our favorite LSU baseball color commentator doing? Doing well, man. Doing well. If I were any better, I would be uh, Jordy Collada. No way. Uh, Landon Marceau gets the it's ball awkward. tonight. Your first, uh, it was weird. Uh, your first reaction was what? Um, I was a little surprised. I kind of expected Eric Walker to get it to start off just because of the experience, um, uh, you know, that he's had in the postseason and, you know, he's more of a veteran, but, uh, you know, I think what is Landon Marceau going to be the 12th freshman to start a, uh, NCAA tournament or maybe the fifth to start the opener. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think the guy can, uh, I think he can obviously get it done. And uh, I really, honestly speaking, uh, of all the guys, if, if you look at the last three weeks of work, I would say Marceau's been the most impressive. Uh, and perhaps in Paul Maneri's mind, has moved into the you know staff ace or one one B roll. When, when you look at that, because everybody looks at at the matchup in this tournament with Arizona State, um, <laughs> what, what's it mean by? Because I feel the same way you do about Marceau being the best option. What's it say about walking your race out there tonight? Well, I mean, I, again, I think it's more of a uh, – rather than an ace, I think it's a 1A, 1B, 1C situation with the three of them. Uh, so, um, you know, I think maybe Paul Maneri would rather the veteran be on the mound against the Southern Miss or, or Arizona State Ball Club. Mm. Uh, I think it's uh, – if it's Eric Walker, I think it's a little risky. If it's Arizona State, just because he's a pitch-to-contact guy, uh, he's got to be on the corners. He's got to get the, the, the corner calls. Uh, the more he has to center it over the wide of the plate, the more susceptible he is to being hit around a little bit. So, of course, it's been uh, widely documented now that Arizona State is having a great year offensively. So that that would be the only surprise for me. But uh, I like it one way or another. I think this team's hot, and I think it's going to be a fun regional to watch. Although, looking at all the regionals across the country, I, I will say I think LSU has one of the toughest. Yeah, I think they absolutely have one of the toughest. And, I, I, I mean, Doug, to me, when I hear Landon Marceau starting game one, um, that's great because I, I feel like, especially here lately, they're 5-1 and one his last six starts. He's He's been the most consistent piece. But that does speak to something that I've kind of talked about all week. This is a starting rotation that feels very sketchy going into tournament time. I love the pin. I love the depth that you have in the bullpen right now. And you're even getting Vitmeyer back, like, you have some options there, but Eric Walker, he's been very inconsistent this year, a lot of ups and downs. Cole Henry, like, where is he at right now? Uh, so my reaction initially to Marceau's start is that it kind of speaks to that weakness. So you think that they go Eric Walker day two instead of Henry? Uh, that's just an assumption. I don't know any more than you guys do uh, uh, in this, you know, in terms of who they're going to uh, start. Uh, these three games. I don't know how Cole Henry feels after, remember, his last start was just a couple innings and it was yeah. uh, kind of a rehab, a rehab start. So I don't even know uh, if he can go more than three or four innings into the game, right? So um, <clears throat> I, I like Marceau, and you nailed it, T-Bob. The reason, the key term that you use is consistency. Right now, you have to go with the guy that's giving you the most consistent uh, performances, and that's Landon Marceau. You have to get game one in a regional series. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, your ace would go uh, in game one. So, again, I think that says a lot for Landon Marceau and what, what Paul Maneri thinks about him right now. And so if the pitching does struggle a bit in the beginning, it's going to come down to those bats, and uh, they've been spectacular. They've really been a bit better all season long, and people give them credit for it. They've been spectacular lately, and it's really been because of the emergence of guys like the Giacomo, but like especially Garza and Broussard. Uh, do you think that someone like Brent Broussard, like can those guys carry over – what they did in Hoover and what they've done lately into the tournament setting? Yeah, absolutely. The game's a, a game of streaks. Uh, you, you know, you have some, some moments where you're hot, some couple weeks where you're hot, some where you, where you lacked off a little bit. But, you know, I think this weekend has to do with a couple things. One, uh, those unnamed heroes, the guys who haven't had the, the, the looks and the opportunities, such as Saul Garza uh, as your everyday starter like Josh Smith, someone unexpectedly is going to have to step up uh, throughout the postseason. Uh, maybe it's someone different in Super Regionals. Maybe it's someone different in the Regional and the World Series. But uh, someone you don't expect is going to have to produce in that offensive lineup. 
Um, and and I, I look for Garza to remain hot. I think Brent Broussar is doing a great job of getting on base. But, but uh, not only will someone have to carry the load that you didn't expect to, now it's time for the Smith, Watson, Duplantis, Cabrera, uh, for the four horses to, to step up and be yes. leaders. And, and yes. they're going to, you know, Cabrera is really struggling here, uh, especially over the SEC tournament. But, uh, you know, to his credit, they pitched him really tough. Like, he doesn't see much over the plate. When he does, it's got some spin on it. Um, but he's going to have to figure it out here going down the home stretch. Those guys will absolutely have to be guys running down uh, through the, the rest of the postseason if the Tigers are going to have any success at all. Easy to see what Garza's brought to the lineup offensively, and he's, he's brought some pop. Um, from, from an ex-All-American pitcher at LSU, what's it mean to have a guy like him behind the plate? Because defensively, he's been pretty impressive, right? Yeah, I think it was like a second team All American. Be careful, people uh, <laughs> stat check all the team uh, all okay. the time there. Maybe it was second okay. team All American. Got that AA. Team. But you I got appreciate that AA. you, and I have much love for you, brother. Um, no, having a big guy like that, and, and you'll also notice Saul Garza makes some movements with his glove, reminding the pitcher, get this one down. Hey, I got it. Let me tell you something. When you got a guy on third base uh, in a 3 2 count, and your catcher taps the ground with his glove to tell you to go ahead and throw this curveball, your best mm. one, throw it right back here. I got you. Uh, that's a good verb. That's a good visual signal from a catcher, and I see a lot of positive energy like that. He'll give a fist pump after a good pitch. Uh, you know, he's always constantly communicating with the pitcher, uh, and I like to see that. And again, again, to have a bigger, the bigger the target back there, the better. Uh, it just seems like uh, the strike zone gets bigger and bigger. Uh, the bigger the guy. Not that Brock Mathis is a small guy by any mm-hmm. stretch of the imagination, but Garza is a monster. I mean, he stands in there at six two and a half, six three, two hundred thirty, two hundred forty pounds. Uh, he's a big dude, uh, retro type player from uh, from the old school days. Talking to Doug Thompson, color analyst for the LSU Sports Radio Network. Doug, um, the risk of looking ahead, uh, maybe Arizona State and LSU don't play tomorrow, whatever. Uh, but speaking of monsters, I can't get these two stat lines out of my head, and that's Torkelson and Bishop. One bats three forty eight, the other bats three forty seven. One has twenty one home runs, the other has twenty two. One has sixty ribbies, the other has sixty one. They've both been walked over forty times. Man. If you're a pitcher and you see the Bash Brothers lining up like that, like how do you approach that lineup? Uh, you know, I might put one right in the rib cage. The first time. <laughs> uh, no, but you can't be intimidated by those guys. When you pitch in, you have to pitch in with some authority. You have to let them know that you will come into that side of the plate. You will throw up and in. But I think you stay away. I think you stay soft away, and you don't let two guys uh, in their lineup beat you. You make the rest of the team beat you. And I realize they have some guys that can swing it in this lineup. But you know what? If you look at these three teams, Stony Brook, Southern Miss, and Arizona State, if you look at their schedule, right, over the past, uh, for Arizona State, five or six weeks, uh, these guys are on like a losing streak yeah. uh, of, of series. I mean, uh, I think Southern Miss have dropped two of their last three. Stony Brook lost to Maine and UMass Lowell uh, two or three uh, in the last couple weeks. And then I think Arizona State, I want to say it's like five of six of the last series that they've actually lost. So all of these teams are struggling a little bit. I know Arizona State started out red hot, uh, and they've, they've been, you know, 17 and 16 or so since starting out 21 and 0. Um, so it, it shows that they have some, some firepower and some things that they can do. But uh, the thing I noticed the most and the, the, the little bit of research that I've done so far is all of these teams have been struggling over the last three or four weeks. So perhaps LSU, uh, who has been playing, I would say, their best baseball over the last couple of weeks, uh, will be prepared and be, be ready to advance on to Athens. Doug, a lot of the ex-players that we talk to over here say that these are the two best weekends to be an LSU baseball player if they have the opportunity to host next weekend, which would be a long shot for a Super, but just playing postseason baseball in Baton Rouge. Give me your experience. Oh, it's the best, man. It's like becoming a uh, professional baseball player. Your only responsibility is to uh, wake up, get some food, and you get to the ballpark. All you have to think about uh, is baseball. There's no school pressure. Uh, you're with your best buddies in the world. Baton Rouge traffic clears out a little bit. Uh, the list goes on and on. But the best possible, the best part about postseason baseball uh, in my time at, at, at LSU and even now is the box, man. Uh, I, I am very hopeful to see a jam-packed box throughout this weekend because they truly are uh, a difference maker, especially in the postseason. Uh, I played with you know guys from 40 different schools in, throughout my minor league career. 
And uh, the, the common theme among all of them was how difficult it really was to play at Alec Box Stadium, especially when, uh, when, the, when the weather gets warmer. So I, that's what I'm most hopeful of. That's my favorite part. Uh, of LSU baseball. You can't beat postseason at the box. I'm excited for tonight. Is there one name, just one name before we get out of here, is there one name that we haven't talked about that could have an impact for this team? Coming down the home stretch here? Yeah. Ooh, you want offense or defense? Either way. I mean, is there just one that pops out to you? 